Hi everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome to another video. I planned to have this video up for you last weekend, but I felt like it wasn't up to where I wanted this project to be. Then I also thought I could complete this project in its entirety by this week. I was wrong. I really underestimated this project. Because I love to work on the fine details, I have decided to make this a two-part video. This week I will show you how I created Hagrid's hut from scratch with materials you can easily get your hands on or probably already have at home. Part 2 of Hagrid's hut will be the interior and the completion of the exterior. So let's get into it. What you've seen me do so far is cut the base of the main hut from a piece of cardboard, which is the shape of a hexagon. I then cut away two parts of the hexagon. This will be the removable part where you can look at the interior of the hut. I then moved on to the floor. All of the wood used in this video is balsa wood. I will list all the materials below along with links if you would like to purchase any of these materials. I measured out with one centimeter wide planks of balsa wood, how many I would need and what size I had to make the wooden hexagon for the center of the floor. I cut all the pieces to size as I went for this floor as every round of floorboards will have different measurements. Before I glued them down with PVA glue, I sanded them along the edges so they look worn. And now enjoy this little montage of me putting the floor together. By the way, the band-aid that you see on my finger, I cut myself pretty badly by cutting the balsa wood because it's so soft and it cuts really easily. So please be mindful, knives are sharp. And this is what the floor looks like so far. But to give it a bit more of a worn look, I grabbed a stone out of my garden and just started pressing it into the soft wood. And this was very effective. What you see me do here is making the wall for the part of the hut where the door will be. I lost the footage for the door assembly, however, they were created by putting seven one centimeter planks together and creating a double Z shape at the other side of the door. I measured the door opening, including the door frame. And then after cutting out windows in some of the other walls, it's time for the assembly. The glue I'm using for this part is acetone based glue and basically Fabri-Tac glue. To strengthen the base and the joints of the walls, I apply wall filler with a palette knife. You can also use a piece of cardboard or an old gift card for this. Hagrid's hut has a large main area where his fireplace, table and chairs are, and a smaller area where, according to the filmmakers, his bed is. In the movies we get glimpses of this smaller area and I've decided for this diorama that only the door can open and close and I won't be building an interior for this part. Out of egg cartons I'm cutting bricks in all kinds of different sizes. I end up using eight egg cartons.
Then, of course, all these bricks have to be attached to the walls. With the same wall filler I used for the joints, I will put the bricks on the walls. I put a decent layer of the wall filler on the cardboard and start applying the bricks by just pushing them in to the wall filler. For the small hut, it took me about half an hour per wall. Moving on to the construction of the roof. I can't quite explain how I got to this shape. It was a lot of measuring and cutting and measuring again, but I got there in the end. Eventually I will create a worksheet with all the measurements for the hut that I created so you can have this as a guide or perhaps to create your own Hagrid's hut. For the roof pieces I used two cereal boxes glued together to create a sturdy cardboard. From smaller pieces of card I created joints for the roof pieces to put them together but give them flexibility to bend. Inside Hagrid's hut there is one wooden wall which I'm creating here from balsa wood. You can also use popsicle sticks for this part or even for all the wood used in this project. However, I've fallen in love with balsa wood so I'm using it here as well. When you look at pictures online for Hagrid's hut there are many different ones. I've chosen to use some creative liberty here and this will be my interpretation of Hagrid's hut. The movie makers have used two different sets for Hagrid's hut and I've decided to go with a normal sized hut. Robbie Coltrane is 185 and that's the 1 12th scale I will be using when making a Hagrid miniature doll and that is what I base this miniature hut on. I won't be making Hagrid for this series as I've never made a miniature doll before but I will be creating him eventually to go with the hut. As you just saw in the video I have a brick stencil However, because I wanted to use the same bricks on the inside as I had on the outside, I won't be using the stencil for this miniature. And this is what we have so far. I also used blue egg cartons because I ran out of white and brown ones. To the fireplace. This is an interior piece and I won't be placing it inside the miniature yet, however it is covered in bricks so it was only logical since I have the materials out that I create this now. And of course I used the same wall filler as I used on the walls. Here I am cutting out the base for the fireplace because it needs to sit on something rather than the wood. I had this piece of chipboard with cobblestones that I've had for probably over 8 years. I thought this made a good base for the fireplace. You can also cut out pieces of cardboard, this will have the same effect. Then finally, finally, finally onto the painting. 
I bought a whole bunch of new paints from Kaisercraft, which is a craft paint that you can buy in Australia. It's, I think it's an Australian brand, and that's what I mainly use for this project. On the doors, the floors, and all the other wooden items that you will see in this video, I use these colors. Then I give all the walls a layer of this slate grey paint. Now I am dry brushing some brown paint over the slate grey walls. After that brown layer I am adding another layer of a darker grey, mixing it a little bit with the lighter grey just to give it a little bit more dimension. Then finally I'm adding some shading to the floorboards and then the floor is done and I'm really, really happy with how this floor and the walls turned out. Moving on to the roof of the hut. I am using craft foam for the roof shingles and I actually loved working with this material. It cut easily and it is easy to paint as well. When all the main roof shingles are on, I am covering the gaps on the corners with overlapping shingles going up on the side of the roof. Then moving on to painting the roof, I started with the darker grey. Once that's dry, I apply light grey, the slate grey that I used for the base of the bricks, making upward strokes so it catches on the shingles. Then the most satisfying part of the painting process is adding the moss. I will be adding some actual moss in part 2 of this video series, but this is a good base to imply where the moss will grow. Now this is the part where I'm adding the doors and the door frames. I had some issues with the hinges and in the end I used super glue to glue the hinges in place. But they do work, so I'm not mad about it. Then here I am making some little door handles by punching out the little flowers, gluing them together, one on top of the other, and on top of that, gluing the door handle with some super glue. And then, of course, gluing the door into place. The windows is an interesting material. This is a tray that once contained two pieces of carrot cake. I thought it would make the perfect windows at some point, and that point has now arrived. I'm cutting the windows to size, glue matchsticks made out of balsa wood in place as window frames on the in and outside and glue in the windows.
Because these windows already have the diamond shapes in them, the only thing I have to do to make it look like leaded windows is to make the lines black with a black permanent liner. I'm painting the windows the same color brown as the doors and the floors and then also add some shading with a darker brown. I had to add this weathered look underneath the windows to make it look just a little bit more realistic. Now moving on to the last element of this video, which is the base the hut will be sitting on and is going to create the exterior environment and basically set the scene for this miniature. I found a piece of plywood that was the perfect size for this miniature, however I will be adding this to the base at a later stage. For now I'm cutting out the same size from cardboard and keep layering that cardboard until I'm happy with the height as the hut stands on kind of a slope. After a couple of layers I let the cardboard set under the plywood and some heavy books so it wouldn't warp. Whilst that is setting I am adding feet to the hut as the hut is elevated in some places. It's elevated by piles of bricks but I will be adding that detail in part 2. Then I thought, just after two layers of cardboard, that just these two little pieces of cardboard would be enough to elevate the hut. Turns out it wasn't, so I removed it and I'm layering a whole lot more layers of cardboard till I'm happy with the height difference. This is much more like it. Then for this final step I take this old acrylic brush, some PVA craft glue and, you're not gonna guess this, tea. We drink a lot of tea here and this is rooibos tea which I really really like. I brewed it, dried it, even put it in the oven to dry it even more, then emptied out the tea bags and this is what we get. I applied PVA glue to the cardboard base, sprinkled the tea on top and pat it down with my hand. Once this layer is dry I applied a mixture of Gorilla wood glue and water to seal in the tea and now I can paint it any way I want. And this is what we have so far, I really hope you like what it is looking like. There is still lots to do and many details to add, but so far I'm really pleased with how it looks and the time and effort I put into this project. To be continued. In two weeks from now I'll be posting part 2 of Hagrid's Hut, so stay tuned and perhaps hit that notification bell so you get notified of future videos. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps my channel out. Make sure to check out my socials and consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you're new here, welcome! Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!